Hi, this is The Recovering Perfectionist. I'm Claire Barton and you're in the right place at the right time. If you're starting to feel like some of your perfectionism is really getting in the way of you moving forward, getting started or finishing anything, this is absolutely the right show for you. This is rehab for your perfectionism, baby. So grab yourself a glass of wine or a cuppa and let's get stuck into it. I have got the amazing Lisa Brinkett from Tipping Point Consultant with me today. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Claire. Fabulous to have you here. Um, Before I get stuck into telling everyone how we know each other, do you want to tell us a bit about what you do and what is Tipping Point Consultant? Sure. Um, Tipping Point Consultant is a business that um, I started with Ellie, who lives in the Netherlands. I'm on the Gold Coast. Uh, Very exotic. very exotic. We um, we um, are both mums and this is a way that we can work really flexibly because we're in different time zones um, and because we um, can leverage each other's skills. Uh, we do three sort of uh, main areas uh, for women that are wanting to get into flexible work and turn their skills into a business. Mm-hmm. Um, we bring our nearly 30 years combined experience of being consultants uh, to helping them uh, down that pathway so that they can earn money from what they already know. Uh, we deliver courses around money confidence. Um, we're really, really passionate about um, gender equality and the pay, um, reducing the pay gap. Uh, so we are, it's our little way of contributing to help, um, help that and help women in business get more comfortable with their business finances. Um, and we do traditional um, consulting work around business plans and investor pitches um, so as that uh, people can really make, know their options and make decisions and, and find that tipping point in their business. Oh, fantastic. I love it. Um, and so you and I first um, kind of came across each other when you were doing a little uh, mini side project as well a couple of months ago. Do you want to tell us about that just quickly? Sure. Um, We run a a Facebook group called Ambitious Mamas um, and we have a conversation series in there um, Mm -hmm. where we talk to different women about um, what it is that they're up to. Uh, So, yeah, I I had a chat to you about what you were up to and shared that in the group. Yeah, it was awesome. So I think from memory, I can't even remember exactly what we talked about, but it was um, we we jumped on to Zoom or Skype, whatever it was. <clears throat> Excuse me. We chatted for maybe ten minutes or so about random bits and pieces. We hit record for about three minutes, and then we sat on and kept talking for another forty five minutes. And it was just, <laughs> it was such an awesome conversation. It's like just awesome, natural. We kind of clicked over a few things. We had some similarities in terms of some family stuff and uh, I thought that was really baby cool. Stuff. I just, yeah, baby <laughs> stuff and business stuff and I just felt like we had heaps in common. Um, yes. The reason or the, the main thing that kind of really sparked my interest and that I wanted to get you on the show was I saw a post, a couple of posts around Facebook land um, in the last couple of weeks with photos of you and Ellie looking absolutely glamorous but a bit like, oh, uh, saying better an oops than a what if and kind of owning some stuff that hadn't quite gone according to plan or that sort of thing. And I absolutely loved it. Um, I've also got the Recovering Facebook, uh, the Recovering Perfectionist Facebook group. And one of our um, theme days is hashtag own it. Um, and what my intention for that is to own the stuff that you do really good, but really own the absolute stuff ups and all that sort of thing and be totally cool with um, making some mistakes and having some failures and, um, you know, learning through that. So when I saw that, it really sort of sparked my interest and I wanted to um, chat with you about it um, and absolutely give you a massive virtual hug and a high five to say, well done for actually owning it and being so authentic and vocal about it. So um, I don't know if you want to go into that specific example or maybe just tell us a bit about why you decided to sort of post that and where that whole thing kind of came from. Sure, sure. I suppose I'll go back a step first, um, and that is that um, we have been, we, we you know, we have and we are, and we're strategy consultants and we're advisors, and we've been on that side of the table for a long time. Mm. Um, and it's much easier sometimes to be on the advice side than it is to be on the doing side. Yeah. Um, so we're really determined um, when we went into business to um, to go in and do and you know just 
experiment and see what works and see what doesn't work and 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 try and be um, scientific about it. Uh, inevitably, we are also emotional about it. Um, <laughs> Uh, but uh, what we what we have been doing is we've been putting together a course around um, around money confidence Mm -hmm. Um, but we put the course together and we called it money mastery and we marketed it as money mastery Um, and we got we got some um, initial sales and we're actually together at the time which was unusual so we're like high-fiving each other and we're going yes this is awesome and then then we got two total um, <laughs> uh, so, um, it was really, it was really useful for us because, um, you know, we, we realized as what, where we were off message mm-hmm. for the course, why we even did it. We had to really go back and say, okay, well, we've invested this time in, in creating this, mm. you know, why did we feel so passionate about, about creating something like this? Um, and we also got a chance to, I suppose, um, practice what we preach a little bit and mm-hmm. sort of say, okay, you know, this is this is what worked, this is what didn't work, this is where mm-hmm. we're going to go from here onwards. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that, you know, it is one of the benefits I've noticed that I have of having a partner. Or as mm-hmm. I can see for a lot for a lot of for a lot of um, you know, for a lot of women who are in business, I could see how it would be a major setback um, when something doesn't work out the way that you want it to work out. Right. Um, but I, I, I received actually this really useful advice about a year and a half ago, which has stayed with me. Um, and it was that when things don't work out the way that you want them to work out, it's actually um, like building a muscle. You're getting ready for the time that it will. Yeah, um, right. And you're making, and you're making it easy for yourself um, mm. when that happens. And for me, that's really, really been a helpful frame to hold when I'm doing when I'm in business is oh, that that didn't work oh good it means I'm I'm more practiced now for the next, next time, time. <laughs> yeah right yeah yeah <laughs> awesome and so I guess um I think that's a really important thing and I, I think we when we're in business and we're in like a solopreneur sort of business and you're really the only person who's in your business um and you might have some support people or coaches or VAs and that sort of thing but it's totally different to working in a team or in a partnership that yeah. like you said something goes wrong and you totally beat yourself up about it and it's um it makes it really difficult sometimes to focus on anything good that that you've sort of done and I focus on a lot with my clients and in my um in pause for effect in the online course in actually doing the review of all the stuff all the stuff everything that has worked and everything that hasn't worked but taking the time to actually go oh yeah I was really good at that I was really good at that but I think um maybe you find this as well, that you kind of get unintentionally and accidentally caught up in this cycle of always moving forward, which is awesome. And obviously that's what you've got to keep doing. But sometimes we are so busy doing the next thing or ticking off the next thing on our on our list or making the next phone call or sending the next email that we actually sort of forget to stop and either acknowledge the things that have gone really well and give ourselves a bit of a pat, pat, pat on the back and a bit of celebration and rewards and that sort of thing. But also when something goes wrong, we madly try and fix it rather than sort of stopping and going, okay, what, what do I need to learn from this? What do I need to kind of get from this rather than just it failed? I have to fix it. What actually, what's actually gone wrong? Was there a block or like you said, was it a messaging issue or was it um, actually something to do with the why was I doing it for the wrong reasons and that sort of thing. So I think that's a really cool kind of um, lesson to get from that. I'm probably, I'm definitely a recovering perfectionist um, <laughs> and I, um, you know, I often need to be reminded um, that we don't need to just have cocktails at the top of the mountain. We can have cocktails along the way. <laughs> um, yes, we can. <laughs> I like that analogy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's, it is, it's, it's really, um, it's been really useful to remember that you know that it's just as important to to enjoy the journey along the way yeah um, and you know I think you know the the flip side of of the course not being as successful as we wanted it to be was that we worked together when those two sales came through yeah and you know we were just like it, when we were together when that happened it was like oh my goodness we are so on the right path yep. to what we want to be doing here yeah um uh it, it it did help that we were drinking cocktails 
exactly. <laughs> and in a completely different time zone as well. So um, in that sort of a sense, like um, two, my two questions is, uh, what was the sort of response when you did sort of say, oh, we stuffed up, oops, better, but, but it's better an oops than a what if, when you put that on Facebook, um, kind of what sort of response did you get and was it what you were expecting to get from your your tribe and your followers and your fans and all of that sort of thing? Yeah, look, I think um, it's an interest, that's an interesting question. I think we, um, I don't think we realise yet what response we've got. Mm. So even the fact that you you know that you noticed and that you that we're now having this conversation um, at the times I mean it's it's probably part of being um, you know part of being in an online business or so sometimes you you know you do wonder if you're like, are you talking to an empty room or yeah. are there people actually listening? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you know I think that um, I think that it will. It will be something that we will see, and we will have more conversations with people as we go on, um, and and get feedback as to you know what what resonated with them and what didn't resonate with them in in, in our experience. Yeah, and I think I think the the most important part of that whole thing is that even if you didn't get people replying or people responding or people saying well done or anything like that in the moment, what it does and anything like that in social media that you don't necessarily have to have comments, shares and likes to know that you're getting through. I mean, it's hard to know that you're getting through, but what it all kind of does is obviously build up your, A, your brand awareness that you are a brand and you are a partnership and you do have this business and this is something that you did offer in the past and you may offer in the future, but it's also about that no like, and trust. So just the fact that someone has stood up and said, sorry, we stuffed up or we stuffed up and this is what we learned from it or we stuffed up and this is how badly we stuffed up and we totally shouldn't have done that. <laughs> That's cool. It just builds that going, oh, they're human, they're real, they're real people. I stuff up too. So it's like a connecting thing and it's um, an authentic, it's not just Instagram authentic. Like, um, yeah, yeah, I won't even go into that because there's a whole lot of other rant about that sort of thing. But it's actually, it's a really great thing and I think the more that we can be honest, and I've had a very similar conversation about this this morning in, in another um episode um about that being okay with being a bit vulnerable and owning it and totally just being like well you know probably my toughest critic is me and the more that you can kind of get over that sort of thing the the better it is for you and for your clients um so I think that's really cool so my second question um was I thought it was really interesting about what you said about uh being on the other side of the table so you you're used to kind of coming in, doing the consulting, putting together the strategy, saying all you need to do is this and then you need to do this and then you need to do this and you need to do this and this is what the outcome will probably be because we've strategized it to within an inch of its life and it's going to be beautiful and easy and flow and here's a document you can sign at the end and tick and flick, blah, blah, blah. Um, And then, like I said, when you're on the other side and you've had a strategy, which I, I guess you've probably come up with between you guys and, you know, it probably felt like it was just going to, you know, go on and, and do what it, what it needed to do and be all sunshine and roses and that sort of thing. And then it hasn't quite gone that far. What sort of, um, what, what did that kind of, um, propel you guys to do in response to what had happened? Yeah. Excellent question. Um, I think that the, um, what I think we, I think there's a couple of things. First of all, um, it it really, I suppose it gave us space to to think about what it was. You know, like I think sometimes if you're, when things actually go really well, you're more inclined to gloss over what didn't go well. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> When things don't go as well, um, you know, you really get get to the you get to sit down and say, okay, um, what what did and didn't work? Why didn't didn't it work? Um, and uh, you know, you get to sort of see um, you, you get to spend more time on on those details. Mm. Um, I think for us, we also we also got the opportunity to put the same we you know we put the same advice that we would give our clients on ourselves yes Uh, which is which is (laughs) um (laughs) giving away the farm here yeah no that's all right we needed to be I mean we 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 probably weren't as visible as what Mm -hmm. we could have been Mm -hmm. during the promotion period um and um 
because we we and it's something it's why we love to talk to other women about this is because we both have small babies Mm -hmm. Um, my son's nine months old and Ali's is five months Um, and some days we did not feel like getting on video and sharing our message Um, (laughs) because we're covered in baby puke and our hair hasn't been washed in seven days so I hear you (laughs) The baby's crying and, um, you know, <laughs> we do not feel like the the professional, you know, <laughs> professional women that can add value to your business. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you know, it was really, for us, it was, um, you know, it was, a, it was really, I suppose, both a reflection um, on what we could have done better but why we didn't and mm-hmm. being okay with that for, for, for the now as well, um, you know, but, uh, it was also a bit of um, silver lining, you know, what else came out of it. There were different things that came out of it than what we expected. You know, we, we went in with the intention um, to have, you know, a group of 20 women build their money confidence. And um, interestingly enough, and it's a, it's kind of a um, probably a bit of a law of attraction thing, we did end up with 20 women, but it was a combination of our previous launches. Um, <laughs> So I'm um, yeah, careful careful how you are uh, careful how you what you wish for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um and I think you know we, we lots of different opportunities actually opened up um off the back of it that were you know not in the original uh not in the original business plan. Mm, interesting. Thanks universe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, interesting. Uh, but I do I do think that generally there's a big difference between um, probably strategy, you know, where it is that you want to go in the long term um, and the tactics. What mm. are you doing on a daily basis? How are you turning up? Um, yeah. How are you executing? Um, and, as, you know, in, a, in, in consulting, uh, in a lot of consulting articles at the moment, they're talking about how um, some of the major consulting players in the world like McKinsey are actually struggling to get that right. Um, to get that mix right, how you know, not only how do you present a strategy, but how do you execute it? Mm. Uh, and it was, and it's the reason that we decided to go into business instead of doing another course or another qualification, or you know, is that sometimes you need to 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 do to learn. So that's really interesting that you say that, and I'm just going to listen to the in it, the universe with this sort of thing. That whole um, strategy versus tactic versus. There's another layer in there. I feel like there's a, there's a, another thing yeah. that um, has popped up a couple of times in the last, I don't know, two weeks or so. So I'd love to get a bit more information from you about that if that's okay. So I take it that the strategies like the umbrella, like the direction, the kind of big picture stuff, and then the tactics is almost like a tick and flick, like a to-do list sort of thing. Maybe yeah, I'll and it, 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 it's, it's kind of a combination of a to-do list and it might be um, to do with timing as well. Mm-hmm. So tactics often are, um, you know, you may, you, may, you may know that you want to move um, to the right um, but you move to the left and then go to the right because you know that, you know, you're going you're gonna to see more people in the left and then they're going to come to the right with you. Right. The tactics are, are sort of a both a both a what you'll do and a when you'll do, okay. um, and sort of a bit more of a pathway than than the end destination. So strategy is um, big big on goal setting, right? So it's knowing kind of what the end product needs to look like in fairly articulated uh, detail. And the tactics might not look like you're actually going towards that goal at some points, but it's all got a bit of a reason that you're kind of spinning back around. So can you give us maybe an example of um, of something that you've maybe worked on either in your own business or, or something sort of um, that you have consulted on recently? Just so, so I find that kind of like I understand what you're saying now, but I know I'm going to go away and be like, what, what was she talking about? So <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. I, it's just one yeah. of those things that I find really difficult to delineate because I'm like, isn't this all a strategy? And then... I know you mentioned before that you also help people write their big business plans and their investor pitches and all of that sort of thing. Um, And that's something I'd definitely like to explore with you while we're chatting as well because I think that's um, something that in um, the the sort of business that I'm in, 
Like I, I'm kind of in two minds about the business planning for various reasons, which we'll come back to in a minute. So maybe, yeah, just give us an example about the um, strategy and tactics and that sort of thing um, in, in real life situation. Okay. Just trying to think of what's the best example to use, but I think that, um, so let's, Let's take a organize a bigger organization to start with. Say, for instance, um, you know you're in a in a in a corporate environment. It would be how how do we um, develop our people so as that we have the best leaders? Mm-hmm. Um, that's going to be your strategy. Um, but you may think you may realize that just sort of saying to them, <laughs> okay, you be know, a better leader. Yeah, you be ten of you be the ten, these are the ten people we want to be better leaders, and the other ninety of you we think <laughs> we'll just leave you as, <laughs> as you are. Um, it may be that you decide which that does happen, which does happen, but tactically <laughs> you may decide. Well, okay, we're going to uh, we're going to cascade it. We're going to start with these people. We're going to have a specific message. They're most going to like to do a workshop and then the next group of people are going to want to do something where they role play things and so tactics is you're still working towards the same direction but tactics is a bit more around um, how you make sure that what you're looking to achieve really gets depth and really Mm. sits with the 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 people Um, in in a um, in an online business it may be that the strategy is that you end up with a following of um, x number of people 10,000 people or 20,000 people the tactics may mean that you um, you go and you meet um, people who have already done it and you um, and you you know you connect with people who are already um, in your market or mm-hmm. you um, start to have conversations with different people or go to specific networking events so as you meet um, you know the right crowd so the tactics are really more about um, the steps in between I suppose mm. to get you towards your strategy so within the strategy you might have milestones set in and then within the milestones there's all the little actions that kind of lead up to um, to those sort of mini mini strategy or mini um, goals I suppose within that sort of thing yeah yeah, yeah. and then of course there's the actual doing of them interesting. all right cool so that's all that's awesome and um, like I mentioned before I think the other thing um, that you mentioned before was about business planning and um, yep. anyone who knows me like knows my planning is basically my middle name I just love planning when I first started the business I didn't really know exactly how to articulate what I wanted to do. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And it, my, my elevator pitch went like this. Um, I'm really good at planning and I like organising stuff. So do you need a hand with anything? <laughs> like, that was kind of my thing. It was really effective. Yeah. You can imagine. People absolutely jumped on it. Not. Um, but <laughs> So I'm definitely, I love to plan. I love having... Um, a bit of a safety net that has some things sort of built into it. So I know that the the bare minimum that I want or the foundation for my business or the foundation for my client love thing, whatever, is there. Um, But I have a bit of a mixed feelings in the last six months about having an actual business plan. Um, And I guess my reason for that is um, if I had set, if I'd done a business plan a year ago, there's no way that I'd be doing some of the sorts of things that I'm doing now because I I didn't even know that they existed. I didn't know there were possibilities. I didn't understand what the opportunities were. I didn't really understand um, a lot about my purpose or my message. I was kind of just trying things out and that sort of thing. So that's kind of what's made me a little bit um, anti-plan. And I, I I know there's certain situations, like you said, that having a plan, like if you're going for a bank loan or investment or kind of that big picture stuff, you obviously need to have some pretty stepped out strategized um, plans in place and that sort of thing. And I totally get that. So I guess I'm interested to kind of hear from you, like where do you draw that line about how much detail to put in and how, like I'm I'm really big on 90 day plans. And I I heard um, probably six months ago or something, someone said, even like Richard Branson, he has this big thing about He's got obviously his strategy, he's got all of his companies, everyone knows where they're going probably 10 years from now, but he only really talks about 90-day plans because there's so many other variables that you just can't kind of plan for in any 
uh, super in-depth way, I suppose. Um, and so the next kind of um, immediate future is more important to absolutely nail than the big picture. So I'm not really sure where I sit kind of on the spectrum. So I'd love to know kind of your um, your take on all of that and the, and the planning and the strategizing and, you know, to what degree do you kind of do all of that stuff? Yeah. yeah. So what I, what I think um, most of the time is that people are at point A um, and they have a view of what point B looks like. Um, and there are multiple ways that you can get from point A to point B. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's two things that, that a business plan really does that is difficult um, potentially to do completely on your own. Some people are, are quite good at doing it on their own, but not always. Um, and that is, first of all, um, kind of clearly marking what all those different options are um, mm. to get from A to B. So you start to see that pathway if you start to see that there's 10 different pathways and one has a tree and one has a lake and um, all of that sort of thing Um, and then the second thing that's really useful is you start to um, create a framework for choosing which path you go on Mm. so you know it may be that path that one pathway is the most direct but it may be that that's not actually what you want in something else that's going on in your life Mm -hmm. so you different pathway so mm-hmm. I think business planning in in my um, view is most useful to help you really clearly see um, what it is that needs to be done to get where you want to go mm. and actually evaluate whether that's the pathway that Aligned. you want to take. Yeah, interesting. Um, and I guess that also kind of gives you an accidental plan B, C, D, E, F, G. So if you try path A and it does not work for you yeah. um, for whatever reason, then you've kind of already got some other options and some other um, vehicles almost to get to the, to like to jump in and try that one instead. Yeah. 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 And I think 90 day planning um, is really, really good um, to, I suppose, like it's a bit like a marathon and having a water stop. You know, like yeah, right. You, yeah, you know, you know, you've got, you know, that you if you just focus <laughs> and keep going for that <laughs> that, that bit, um, that you're gonna you're gonna get to the next bit. And if Let's you get call to it that a cocktail point, stop, we've already talked about cocktails. <laughs> I'm not going back to water um, at this stage. <laughs> yes, I've, I've never done a marathon. Um, so, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Um, so what I imagine it to be anyway, I'm trying to think of what, I, what, what I actually do that would be. <laughs> be similar. So if you were to do, um, if you were to work with someone, do you, do, is, is one of the big things you do now in, in tipping point consulting, um, doing that business plans and how long do you typically set one out for, or is it different for every person, every business? It is different for every person um, and every business. Uh, for us, the I suppose the bit that is the the interesting overlay is that each of those pathways has a financial um, a financial repercussion, a financial mm-hmm. overlay, um, and you know it, it's a, it's kind of helping people combine. What do I need to do? What would I need? What would this look like if I was actually going to go down that pathway? Mm. And then does does the financial side actually match to what I think it does for that pathway? Um, so that's mm. the that's the kind of overlay that um, that business planning generally leads to is you know is yes. this is does this actually lead to me making money in my business? Is it is it does, does it make sense? Um, mm. We spend a lot of time with mums um, looking at their finances and then looking back at how much time they have. Um, so you know, That's an like interesting I'm, one. <laughs> <laughs> I have this plan of how I'm going to, um, you know, create and do this and grow this product or grow this service. Um, oh, but I only have 20 hours a week. So we go back and we say, look, you know, here's here's how your time is going to be allocated against that. Yeah. Um, is so does that make sense? Are you going to need more people in your team? If you need more people in your team. What does your finances look like to do that? Yep. You know, is it set up to do that? Oh, I'm so glad you said that. I have um, very similar. There's a section in one of my modules as well that's like, now we're going to do a stock take of how many hours you can at the most 
look um, do in your business. And that's including if you're doing weekends and evenings, which let's face it, we're probably all doing a little bits and pieces here and there. And um, it was, I think for a lot of people, I did, I did it as a part of a webinar and then I did it in part of the um the online course as well and I think it probably got the biggest aha moments for everyone who was doing it so like I'm planning on 30 hours of work between now and the end of the year for example I've got this to create and this to create and this to create and I've already worked out that it's going to take me 60 hours to do that and 20 hours to do that and da 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 and all and that was all probably very underestimated as well and then they've stepped out and gone Oh, but I only have 16 hours a week that I can work on it between daycare and I would like between the kids, you know, either being asleep or not being there or, you know, the time that I know that I can keep them busy watching telly or something. Um, and all the other things that you have to do and all that sort of thing. I think it was a really interesting that they go, Oh God, I've, I'm planning on doing 40 hours worth of work, but there's two problems. I only have 18 or 20 hours to work on my business. And I started doing this business because I don't want to be doing 40 hours a week again. (laughs) So it's a really eye-opening thing when you stop and analyze how many hours you've got to do, what the work is that you want to do. And it really makes it really clear on how to prioritize some things then I think. And um, I think also probably makes it easier to push back on things and say, no, I'm not doing that. Or no, I can't take on a new client for this particular thing or Um, yes I can or you know and it's sometimes it's the other way around as well where they go I've actually got 40 hours that I spend on my business or that I could spend on my business but I know that I'm spending three hours a week just you know randomly looking through Facebook so you know they can kind of actually bulk up what they're doing um, a little bit more effectively as well so um, it's awesome that you do that too that's fabulous I love it yeah and we spend a bit of time I think uh, looking at uh, I suppose multiple streams of income and how that can then help to get more people involved with with your life. So, for instance, you know, we Airbnb, one of our, part of our house here, which um, means that my cleaner is absolutely sorted. Um, <laughs> um, we, we do our traditional consulting work um, as well uh, as what we're doing for Ambitious Mamas, um, which means that we have a virtual assistant that works with us um, each and every week uh, to keep us on track and give us momentum. Um, So as when we do have sick children, when we do have other things going on in our life, there's still somebody else that's consistently, um, you know, driving things things forward. forward. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, um, you know, we, we're practicing what we preach as as much as we can. (laughs) Yeah, beautiful. And I guess um, the the last thing that I'd love to hear about is a little bit more about the partnership agreement that you and Ellie obviously have. I think that's absolutely amazing. And I remember when we talked about it last time that you were saying, you know, and you mentioned it before as well, that it's awesome that she's in a totally different time zone, obviously being in Europe. So it almost, um, I mean, it more than doubles the sort of people that you can access and the people who are on social media, if that's where your strategy is. Um, at different times of the day and that when one of you goes to bed, the other one's just starting. So it actually is, um, it sounds like a match made in heaven and the sort of thing that could be fantastic. And you don't have to share your office with anyone. So I'm a little bit interested to just sort of hear um, anything like that. And I'm also uh, working on a couple of joint ventures for completely different things as well. So um, any sort of tips and tricks or things to avoid when you're doing anything in a joint venture sort of a situation? Sure. We worked virtually. Ellie and I had worked virtually before together. Mm -hmm. Um, So when I first had my son, um, before Ellie had children, um, I was actually back filling her breaks. So we were doing a project where she would work three, um, she would work six weeks and I would work um, two weeks, her two weeks off, I would come and work and then she would work the next six weeks and I would work the next two weeks. So we had worked together. Um, a project through a bigger consulting firm, right? In it was, it Africa. was. And in Africa, in Ghana. So cool. <laughs> uh, so that's a that's a whole different tangent. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> we, I suppose, some of the really um, practical tips that we that we use and that work really well for us is that um, we share files. That's that's a given. You know, all the files yeah. are um, on a shared drive. We're accessing the same thing. Um, mm-hmm. We're very uh, we're very good at our version control, so it's mm-hmm. very obvious who's worked on what. Uh, we use Skype as like our water cooler, 
So if I'm in my day and I'm thinking, oh, I wonder if this is a good idea, I'll Skype, I'll write it in Skype knowing that Ellie will pick it up when she wakes up and she'll think about it and she'll write something back. Or when she, yep, 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 yep. So we use Skype as our water cooler. Um, we use Zoom uh, like, like to videotape what we're doing uh, mm-hmm. if we need somebody else to pick it up. So if we're working with our virtual assistant, we will um, we will zoom the call, and she can go back and um, pick up what we've said and and um, and use that. And out of interest, where is your VA? Is she in a third she's country? Actually, we've got well, we've got three, um, <coughs> but she's um, um, we've got two Australian VAs, um, and then we've got also a, um, a VA hub. Um, and you know offshore VA hub yeah, that cool. we also use yeah awesome um so but our, yeah predominantly Australia yeah um, is where we spend most of our time uh talking to our VA yeah cool and yeah we just um mostly I suppose we talk a lot we communicate mm. a lot uh, we we do it by three or four different ways yeah it's emails it's in the files that we're working in it's Skype yeah. Um, it's getting together and talking on, you know, when we have a chance together. Yeah. Um, so that's probably the big secret is to um, to keep talking. Talk lots. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Absolutely. Very cool. Well, thank you so much. Um, I don't think I have any other huge questions. I'm sure we'll jump on again at some other point and do another one of these because I'm absolutely intrigued by all of your stuff. Um, and, oh, there is one more thing actually. The money mm-hmm. archetypes, I know that's something that we're about to talk about in um, another forum very shortly, but I am absolutely intrigued by it. So can you just run me run me through roughly kind of sort of what I'm in for? Because I'd love to know. I think it's a really interesting um, concept. So, yeah, tell us a bit about that. Sure. Um, there's like kind of like a before and after profiling test that I do for wealth, wealth creation. Mm-hmm. Um, one is um, the archetypes, which is where are you now? What what predominantly are you sitting in? Um, and it gives you a sense of um, probably where you're not looking at some of the stuff in your in in your finances. So where is it that you're uh, perhaps kind of turning a blind eye or putting the <laughs> glasses on or um you know sort of and and usually to be fair most of the time you know the way that we um relate to money and the way that we work with it comes is the learned thing it comes from our upbringing it comes from who we're surrounded with mm. uh, and our natural strengths so the money archetypes is really a um a initial sort of view of where you are now around your around your money mindset around um what your creating in terms of wealth Um, and then I do an after um, which is a a wealth dynamics profile test Um, and that's really focused on you uh, knowing where you're in flow what you're really good at how you should build your team um, and what pathway you take to create wealth in your life and and make that an easier Mm -hmm. I can't wait it's gonna be so juicy (laughs) Um, I can't wait to talk to you about that. I think it's really interesting. Um, I, uh, probably 12 months ago, um, I started sort of hearing again, these sorts of things like all this online business and, you know, some of these sort of, um, alternative styles, I suppose, of, uh, thinking about your mindset and that sort of thing was kind of new to me, I suppose, in a lot of ways. And I remember I heard, you know, someone said, you know, we'll go through and we'll find all your money hangups and we'll work out what's blocking you. What are your money blocks? And I was like, I don't have any money blocks. I'm great with money. I'm good at, I'm good at saving and I'm very thrifty and I won't buy anything unless it's on sale. And I'm like, that's a money block. That's a thing, right? So then I went through, I don't know, it was a seven day challenge or something. And um, just uncovering a few things, it's like, God, that is actually a thing. It's not, you know, and it's not necessarily bad stuff, but it's just understanding kind of what my attitude and my relationship was with money where I was just like, no, nah, she's all right. She's sweet. We're all good. We've got savings. I'm good at, I'm yeah. good at, you know, um, saving my pennies and I won't buy things unless I really want it or really need it or whatever. Um, but even that sort of thing is your money stuff. That's a thing like, I'm, you know, and I know, and now that I've done some work, I know 
kind of where some of that stuff's come from and it's kind of opened a bit of a bag of worms so yeah I'm super interested to um, explore that with you a bit more (laughs) as well yeah and what's fascinating what I'm finding a lot at the moment is that a lot of women have two money personalities they have money personality that's their personal stuff so it's that story well I save well I don't spend too much and then they have their business personality Mm -hmm. um which is which is dealing with um, especially in the startup phase some insecurities, yeah. um, you know, a new way of thinking, a new way of dealing with things, and um, those two personalities not always the same. Interesting. Well, I can't wait to see what you uncover about me. <laughs> kind of, <laughs> kind of, sort of. Awesome. So, Lisa, I'm sure um, people will be wanting to get in touch with you. Is uh, is the best way for people to get in touch on your Facebook page or your group? It is. It is. We're um, we're Tipping Point Consultant on Facebook, um, and Ambitious Mamas is our closed Facebook group. Fantastic. Um, so I will also put all of your contact details and everything in the show notes um, if people want links and that sort of thing. But thank you so much for coming on today. It was awesome chatting with you. I absolutely love your style and your business and your message. And I'm sure we could just keep talking about it for hours, but we might leave it there and pick it up again another time. Thanks, Claire. On on to cocktails, right? Yes. Yes.